Well, unfortunately, off the back of yesterday's episode of the Leipzig Loco, things haven't gone to plan on pitch here at Locomotive Leipzig. The only thing that has gone to plan was the fact we did no business on transfer deadline day. Hopefully today we can get back on track as we take on two teams below us in Glüffer and 1860 Munich. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to episode 43 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today, hopefully, a chance for us to move back up the two Bundesliga table as we take on Glüffer Firth at home and then 1860 Munich away. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode right off the back of the end of the transfer window, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we've played two games in the two Bundesliga and had the end of the transfer window off the back of the two games that we did play in yesterday's episode. One of those was in the first round of the DFB Pockle. If you missed the episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner, thankfully did pick up wins in both of those games, albeit did leave it late on penalties away at Magdeburg from down in the free league and off the back of that 3-0 win, impressive 3-0 win, slightly fortunate though, over Dynamo Dresden a game. It did feel like we had the FM gods on our side with we did take on a team in Hamburg just coming down from the Bundesliga who were a bit stronger. Actually played quite well in this game, much like when we took on Hanover at the start of the season, but unfortunately could only muster a draw, albeit not a bad result considering we did go 1-0 down just before halftime. Thankfully, Cueto did score a goal in the last minute of regular time, and we do pick up a one all draw result. We probably at the least deserve from this game, as you can tell by stats. Certainly the better team, but somehow did find ourselves behind late in that first half. Thankfully, did manage to get a point out of that game, and off the back of that, a bit more of a disappointing result, we went away to take on Eintracht Braunschweig and did suffer a 2-1 defeat. Got off to a good start here with a goal to Cliche, just shy of the half-hour mark, but unfortunately, right off the back of that, Bruckelman started to get the better of us in the air from corners. Grabbed an equaliser very shortly off the back of that goal to Cliche, and then in the last minute of regular time, he grabbed a winner, it's fair to say, off the back of that, I did have a look at our set-piece defence in particular corners, and certainly that needed some adjusting with the new players that we do have here these days at Locomotive Leipzig, so it's fair to say that result might actually be on my hands, but a pretty even game, unfortunately, we did suffer a 2-1 defeat thanks to those set-piece goals. What that means for the two Bundesliga table going in to today's episode, albeit with quite a few teams having already played on the sixth match day, we find ourselves down in eighth, we can pick up a win in the first game of today's episode. We'll go back around about 5th or 6th on the table. If we don't pick up maximum points, we'll find ourselves slipping closer to the relegation zone currently filled by teams like Paderborn, Uzgeburga and Heidenheim, who we already know we are much better than having beaten them 3-0 in that first episode of the new season. But as I mentioned in the intro, as was the plan, we did no business off the back of the last episode that was of note, just loaned out a few players from our under-19s on deadline day, so nothing there that we really need to cover off, and thankfully as well, we have no injury concerns going into today's episode. We're going to take on a group of first team we haven't met for a few seasons. This was the first team we played in the DFB Pockel in the save at that stage. We're in the free Liga. These guys were in the two Bundesliga, and we did pick up a win over them after extra time, so hopefully we can repeat the dose here with this one being in front of our home fans and especially with them being down in 10th on the league table, albeit they are starting to find a little bit of form off the back of a rough patch to start the season and off the back of that we will take on an 1860 Munich team who did just manage to stay up in the two Bundesliga last season, don't think they were that impressive and as you can see their form a little bit the opposite of what group of Firth bring into this one, they've started to hit a bit of a rough patch and do find themselves just outside of that relegation zone, albeit that one could be a little bit tricky away from home, but two teams 
expected to be finishing in that bottom half of the table still expected to be finishing above us but hopefully on our start to the season these are some games we can pick up some points from and hopefully turn things around off the back of that little rough patch that we did just hit at the end of August and we'll come back shortly and get stuck into our first game of today's episode as we take on Glufferfirth at home. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode and with no injuries we are at full strength for this one. Coachella and Cueto come back into the mix after they've suffered some injuries early in the season. There are Glufferfirth going with a 4-4-2 albeit some good names in that team in particular Balagan up front but hopefully we can still pick up a result here at home. And it's taken a long time to get the first highlight in this game, just shy of the 40 minute mark, but it is a free kick here to Glufer Firth so far. It's been a very even game. Ryan here will try and put this one top right corner, and thankfully Krapakas just tips that one onto the bar, and from there, a free kick. Did look like one of the Glufer Firth players could have had the chance to bundle that over the line. Thankfully, that was not the case. It does remain nil, all albeit right before half time. One more highlight here for the opposition looking for Balagon there inside of the box. Thankfully, we somewhat deal with that danger, albeit another ball is played in here. Dorenzo heads that one away, but Arkanjo puts that into the mixer for Gartung, but thankfully his header does go just over the bar. But that is a pretty average first half, just two highlights. Both of them were in favor of Grufer Firth. Some good chances late, as you can tell from that XG match story. But overall, you could argue we've actually had the better of that first half, a few more shots on target, but obviously based on highlights, you would not think that was the case at the moment. Most of our players actually not on too bad a rating, so we'll just give them a bit of a rev up here at half time and hopefully get a bit more happening in our favour in the second half. We'll get things back underway, still locked up at nibble. And up to the hour mark, no highlights so far in the second half, and it's fair to say we're still looking a bit average in this game, so a few players up front are struggling. Bulland will come on for a Tilgan and Salue for Cliget up front. Still locked up at nil all with a half hour left. And with 25 minutes left in this game, finally a potential highlight here in our favour of free kick. But unfortunately, Fana does head that one away. Good chance there for Cueto from just outside the box, but forces a very good save out of the Glyfer Firth goalkeeper. For some reason, Bulland heads that one over the line for a goal kick. And with 20 minutes left, still locked up here at nil all, but hopefully now. We can start to get on the front foot a little bit more. A few players out there on 6.6s will take them off. We'll bring on Ernesto for Haxa as well as Kim for Cueto. Also a few more players on some more positive roles. And hopefully start to get on the front foot a little bit more. With 20 minutes left, still nil all. And shortly off the back of those most recent substitutions, it is here a goal kick in favour of Glufa Firth. But unfortunately, we cannot win the ball back off that in Glufa Firth. Might get a chance here to try and take the lead away from home. Wolfa starts to make his way down this left-hand side, but good work there from Kwasniki for us. Our right winger does quite well there to keep the ball. Plays that for Bullock. Nice ball over the top here for Ernesto. Fresh off the bench. What can he do? Looks to find a teammate, but a poor pass there or not well read by one of our players. And now a chance here for Glufa Firth. On the counter-attack, Bulligan starts to make his way just on the edge of the box. Big chance there for Kagan. Once that ball did get squared to him, thankfully, bit of help there from the crossbar. Just finds a way to not go over the line. We clear it out for another corner, but thankfully for now, still locked up at nil all. And we do head that one away from that set piece. Nil all as we're about to enter. The last 10 minutes of this game and Racine Bullock has just picked up a yellow card with our last substitution. Leon Heinke can come on for him, as we can hopefully break through and grab all three points. We'll also chuck our wing backs on attack now with 10 minutes left, still nil. All. And just in the last couple of minutes of this game, and there is one more highlight in this one with five minutes to go. We did go a bit more positive as well with our midfielders role. So these days we are kind of going for it in this game. Unfortunately, though, can't quite link up with Kim there in that highlight in our group of Firth. Might get a chance, and they might get a really good one here too. It's a mix-up at the back, but thankfully, I think that was Lucas Search or maybe Gal who got a foot in the way of that open net because a big mix-up there between Krapakas and one of those central defenders. And thankfully, they're going to have to try and get a goal here to win this game from a set piece. So far, our corner defense 
has been a lot better than in that previous game against Eintracht Braunschweig. And thankfully, we cleared it. Went out to Anton Bulland, who starts to make some headway down this left-hand side. Will we get a chance here from this highlight in the first minute of added time? Try and play a ball over the top there for Sir Louis. Missed header, but unfortunately, nothing comes from it. We'll go attacking for the dying stages of this game. But unfortunately, it is just a nil or draw to be fair. Certainly not at our best in that game, especially in that second half. Proof of Firth had most of the highlights in their favour, and we do escape with a nil or draw. It's encouraging. We're actually picking up some points this season. We're not quite playing at our best, including that second game in today's episode. That rather weird 3 0 win over Dynamo Dresden, but that one wasn't a great performance. But thankfully, we don't suffer defeat. It's a nil or draw at home against Glufa Firth. Hopefully, we can do better against the team a bit lower down on the table as we'll come back and travel away to take on 1860 Munich. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. There are 1860 Munich also going with a 4 4 2. So, two teams there playing the same formation. In today's episode, we are exactly the same as we were for that first game of today's episode. Hopefully this time a bit better in front of goal. We certainly have been so far this season. Hopefully that doesn't turn the way that it was for most of last season. And we can pick up a better result here away from home against the team closer to the relegation zone. And it's only taken five minutes of the first highlight in this game. Albeit it is in favour of the opposition at home here in 1860 Munich. But thankfully that ball falls very safely into the hands of Krapakas in goal, rolls that one out or throws that one out to Dorenzo on our left-hand side. Atilgan now on the ball so far, being a little bit average, I think it's fair to say, so far this season. Hopefully that does not become a trend because so far being one of the best players in the save. Nice ball there though from Bullock for Thibaut Cliche. He will grab his sixth goal of the season already, matching what Ziani did for us last season when he was our top goal scorer, so you can see. Already the improved goal scoring touch from us this season. And Racine Bullock picks up a nice assist there with that ball over the top. Nice finish there from Cliche. Close enough into that bottom left corner. And we take an early 1-0 lead. And only a few minutes off the back of grabbing our 1-0 lead. Now we are down the other end here. It's a dangerous spot for a free kick here to 18-60 minute. But Krapakas brings out a big save. That looked like it was destined for the top right corner. But Krapakas makes a good save. Of course, last season... Got beaten a few times from those free kicks. Looks like this season he might just be a little bit better. And thankfully, again, we deal with the danger from that corner. Good tackle there from Bullock having a strong opening to this game. And we hold on to our 1-0 lead. And just past the 20 minute mark, we get our next highlight in this game. We have picked up a few yellow cards in defense, which is a bit concerning. Might have to deal with that at half time. We have the ball here. Bullock tries to free one through yet again for Cliche, but does quite well to win that one back for us. And now we get something going down this right-hand side through our right back. And Huxa back there for Bullock. Puts one far post for a Tilgan. Gets a header on the end of that one. It goes just over the bar. But so far, a much better performance from us, even if it's just been for 20 minutes in this game. And we hold on to our 1-0 lead. And Bullock again, having a very strong opening to this game, wins that ball back for us. And we can get another chance here on the attack. He's on the ball again. Huxa up to Krasnicki. Just inside the byline, that one will find a Tilgan at the far post, gets a hair off, but that one falls safe into the hands of the 1860-minute goalkeeper. But this highlight is going to continue. Still 1-0 halfway through the first half. They pump that one deep, and Gal wins that one at the back. Now Cueto out to Coachella Cliche, out to a Tilgan. Lovely passing here, Cueto just inside the box. The goalkeeper gets a good touch on it, but can't keep it. From going into that bottom right corner, that's a very good goal. And we make it 2-0 halfway through the first half. And this is looking a lot better away from home than we looked at home in that group of first game first up. In today's episode, good run there from Queto. And just as enough to beat Hiller in goal. And we take a 2-0 lead halfway through the first half. And into the last couple of minutes of this first half, and we do have a free kick here, albeit it's dealt with pretty safely there in defence from 1860 minute. But good work again there from our midfielders. And we do win it back, definitely going to be making some changes in defence here at half time. A lot of players are on yellow cards. A Tilgan gets a shot off there, but unfortunately a defender to recover as well. Therefore, 1860 Munich and puts that one out for a corner. But so far, this has been a really good first half. Hopefully, we can hold on to this two-goal buffer going into the sheds. Unfortunately, nothing doing 
from that corner. And I think that will do it for the first half. And thankfully, none of those players on yellows pick up a second one. I dare say we'll be making a few, few substitutions here at half time with that yellow card situation. But apart from that, very happy with how that first half went going into the sheds with a 2-0 lead away from home. So we're going to make a lot of subs here. Molati will come on for Coachella. We'll bring on Yuli Bas or Dorenzo. Also, we're going to bring on in place of Tom Gale, Lucas Locke, and Leon Heinke in place of Lucas Search because he can also cover centre-back as well as that ball-winning midfield role. A bit more versatility on the bench than someone like Stankovic. So four subs used there at halftime just to make sure, hopefully, we don't go down to 10 men. But apart from that, very happy with how this one's going. We'll get the second half underway with a 2-0 lead. And around about 20 minutes into the second half, no highlights so far in it, but Daniel Cueto has just picked up a yellow card. We're going to play things safe here with our last substitution. Sung Bin Kim will come on for him. That'll be all our subs used, and we are still 2-0 up. And we're just entering the last five minutes of this game. It's fair to say it's been a very quiet second half so far, but we don't mind off the back of what was a strong first half, taking a 2-0 lead. We're just going to try and slow things down a little bit inside the last few minutes of this game to make sure that 1860 Munich don't find a way back into this game. We'll also tell our goalkeeper to slow things down instead of go quickly in distributing the ball. And there is a late highlight here for 1860 Munich, but thankfully we do quite well to turn that ball over, albeit give it away. But thankfully Bullock having a very good game today wins that one back for us in the midfield. Now Kim tries to find, I believe that might be a Tilgan there at left wing. It was a bit funny that run, but nonetheless 1860 Munich do get the ball back and we'll get a chance here to do something down this right-hand side. And actually have quite a few numbers here on the counter-attack, which is a bit interesting. Thankfully, though, that's a poor pass and Huxa gets on the ball. Now, Atilgan controls that nicely, plays it through well for Cliche, but unfortunately, a little bit too much on that one. And Hiller will pump that one deep quickly here for 18-60 minutes. Tries to play a ball forward. Good work, though, from Marathi. And now it might be a chance for us here to do something on the counter-attack, Kim squares that one nicely for Cliche. Good touch. He'll pick up his seventh goal of the season already. Breaks the record we had for a top goal scorer from last season. And that is only about seven games into the season. Seven or eight. So he's going around about a goal a game here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, which is very good to see off the back of our goal-scoring troubles last season. And that absolutely puts a cherry on top here away from home. He picks up a double, and that will be a 3-0 win at least it should be as we do enter the last couple of seconds of this game. There's one more highlight. I dare say though it won't amount to too much or at least anything noteworthy anyway as we do hold a free goal lead. They pull the ball into the mix of Pinto. Gets a header off. Really good tip there from Krapakas to make sure that he keeps a clean sheet and we pick up a pretty impressive 3-0 win there away from home. Certainly based on stats. Not a super dominant performance, but based on XG, we were the better team. And thankfully this time, we were efficient in front of goal, with Cliche picking up a double, as well as Queto about halfway through the first half, which did give us that two-goal cushion. And that is a nice 3 0 win away from home. And hopefully, that means we'll just extend the gap on those relegation teams and move a bit further into that top half of the table. As you can see, we are going to be fifth off the back of that result for now. A very good 3 0 win away at 1860 Munich. And back in the inbox of back those two games in today's episode, bit of a disappointing performance first up, a nil or draw at home against Grufa Firth, but thankfully did a lot better in that second game, a 3-0 win there over 1860 Munich. That was the last match day of that match week as well, so it does actually mean we will be in fifth spot off the back of that seventh game of the season, and it does mean we're just a little bit closer these days to those teams in the promotion spots than we are to the ones down in the relegation spots. The teams like Darmstadt, Paderborn, and the one that we've just beaten in 1860 Munich. So hopefully, we're going to put ourselves in a pretty similar position to where we found ourselves last season, albeit we're there a little bit sooner this time around and have quite as much off a rough start. So hopefully, we might even give ourselves a chance of trying to earn promotion up to the Bundesliga for next season. But I think that will do it. For today's episode, a bit of a quick one with that first game not being up to much and being a nil or draw, but thankfully a much better display, a 3-0 win away at 1860 Munich. In that second game, if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here 
on the channel. Also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. Now that we have got through the transfer window, we can start to progress through this season just a little bit quicker, I feel like, especially as early days it does look like we are far from being a team that should be in relegation danger this season, having already been some teams quite comprehensively by 3-0 scorelines, and those teams are down around that bottom end of the table, so I would imagine we should be staying above teams like that. I think we might come back for in tomorrow's episode, we'll get for a fair bit in late September and early October as we take on some teams that we really should be picking up some decent results against, and we'll come back and take part in the second round of the DFB Pockel, the Cup, we'll take on Bochum, also down the free Liga, like our first opposition were in yesterday's episode in Magdeburg, these guys also got relegated from the two Bundesliga last season, and off the back of that, we'll take on currently the table-topping Arminia Bielefeld at home. In the two Bundesliga, of course, that match might have a bit of extra spice these days. That is the team of Linus Zimmer, so we'll see how we get on against the potential table toppers by that stage, as well as hopefully make our way through to the third round for the first time in the DFB Pockel. So until tomorrow, for those two games in late October, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.